We regrettably skipped the 2019 Shmups Top 10 because, well, we kinda didn't get around to playing enough of its best releases. But 2020? That's a whole nother story. All kinds of great shooters were released this year over a wide range of systems, from PC to Switch to Xbox One to PS4 and even the Sega Dreamcast and Genesis. Of course, some were better than others, but we think we've got a solid list for the best ones we've played since 2019 ended. So it's time once again for the Bullet Heaven Top 10 Shmups, this time for 2020. Due to some extraneous circumstances, we never did actually get around to reviewing this one on Bullet Heaven this year, but it did make its way into one of our live streams late in 2020. Super Zykes features an excellent balance of flash and challenge with a great soundtrack and clean visuals to boot. Its playability is such that simply playtesting the game led to a multiple hours long play session. With a default, challenging setting, veterans will be right at home, but newer and intermediate players should have no trouble with its reduced normal setting. Add to that special bonus stages and a super satisfying scoring system, and players from all skill levels are sure to have a cathartic time. We'd say that this is, perhaps, Grabanzer Fox's best ever title. NG Dev's Neo Zykes was okay and all, but Super Zykes is the real deal, and it grabs the number 10 spot. We may have poked fun at the horrendous localization of Shikigami no Shiro all the way back in Episode 2 of Bullet Heaven, but its gameplay is where it's at. Shikigami no Shiro 3 may have fallen to the wayside for us, but it's no less good than its predecessor. Thankfully, Alpha System made a great return to forum on the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 with Sisters Royale. Lifting almost every aspect from Shikigami no Shiro with regards to gameplay and scoring, Sisters Royale maintains the same bullet grazing gameplay as its spiritual predecessors. But then it changes the setting from aerial to terrestrial, adds environmental variables, and extra scoring hooks to add a fresh spin to the whole thing. Even the story is worth reading through with some truly vicious banter between these five warring sisters. Despite being a single-player game, Sisters Royale might be the best Shikigami no Shiro game there is without actually being a mainline title in the series that it was derived from. Sisters Royale drops in at number 9. Longtime viewers are sure to remember the lengths to which I went just to play Luftrausers. Traveling across the continent just to get hands-on for less than half an hour of playtime seems extreme unless you've played it, and we knew from the second we tried it in 2012 that it was a very special game. Not surprisingly, I wanted more, and Jet Lancer seemed to have what I needed. New mechanics, multiple control schemes, fantastic full-color visuals, great sound, decent characters, excellent design, and a cat that fixes your jet? Hell yes. With a lengthy campaign, awesome bosses, challenging stage clear objectives involving time and damage mitigation, the ability to avoid death with perfect roll and dash attack timing, and all kinds of aircraft customizability, Jet Lancer is exactly what we wanted in a Luftrausers evolution. Vlambeer is no more, which saddens us deeply, but developer Codewakers gives us hope that further games, or even better ones, with the formula we've seen in Jet Lancer may happen again in the future. Jet Lancer smashes into the number 8 spot for 2020.
Astroport has been a common name on Bullet Heaven, with several of its games appearing on the show from publisher New Media. Most recently, though, Pixelheart has been producing new versions of Astroport's games on a variety of consoles in conjunction with Josh Prod and Studio Storybird. One of these is an enhanced version of Astroport's gradius alike horizontal shooter, Cetasius. While many of Pixelheart's other Astroport PC-to-console ports have been, well, less than ideal, their release of Cetasius Next is just about the polar opposite. New reworked sprites, clear, sharp backgrounds and enemies, great color, and an awesome arranged soundtrack eclipse the original almost entirely. We never really felt compelled to play through Cetasius when we first checked it out all that time ago on PC, but Cetasius Next grabbed us and didn't let go. Cetasius Next is an excellent conversion, and it grabs the number 7 spot. New Mega Drive games in 2020 are one thing, we suppose, but new Dreamcast shooters in 2020? That gets us feeling all kinds of ways. Bitmap Bureau already had our attention with Xenocrisis way back when. We pre-ordered it on Neo Geo CD when it was announced, after all. But when we learned about the Dreamcast release, we knew we needed in. This is a hard-as-hell game, sporting Super Smash TV-style faux twin-stick gameplay, upgradable stats and abilities, randomized stages, excellent two-player co-op, a fantastic soundtrack derived from the Mega Drive version, and detailed super-sharp pixel art. Learning its ins and outs will take a bit of time, and it's a damn fine ride while players do so. The Dreamcast version even has brighter color, cleaner audio, and extra VO added to the mix, distinguishing it further from its Mega Drive brother. VGA support brings it closer to the modern releases on PC and 8th gen home consoles, and it even features VMU support displaying the player's current life totals. Basically, Xenocrisis is the best Dreamcast game to hit the scene in 2020, but regardless of the version you play, it's still worthy of its number 6 spot. Just to look at it at a glance, you may not think that Cute's Eschatos would even be considered a top 10 shmup on 360, but in reality it's actually a top tier contender. And believe it or not, it's my personal favorite on the platform. So we were extremely excited about Cute's direct 360 follow-up, Ginga Force. But we never got it. Well, not until after we checked out the recent PlayStation 4 release from Rising Star Games and we have to say it was well worth the wait. Granted, Ginga Force is nothing like Eskatos other than it's also a vertically scrolling shooting game. It has single stage campaign progression, a shop based upgrade and add on system, plays in a Yoko aspect ratio, and adds a cast of characters to its rather extensive story. It also adds additional control and scoring mechanics to the mix, spicing up the gameplay and further distancing itself from Eskatos in the process. Because of these changes, Ginga Force isn't as streamlined as Eskatos was, and it doesn't flow quite as well either. But it's still so good that it very nearly grabbed the same rating as its predecessor. And that's all without mentioning the gorgeous visuals, dynamic perspective changes, cinematic dialogue that Raiden 5 only wishes it had, and a soundtrack that just doesn't quit. There's a lot to play and a lot to unlock in Ginga Force, so anyone looking for a solid shooter on the PlayStation 4 and Steam that respects their time even more than your typical STG can have it all right here. Ginga Force really nails it, and it grabs the number 5 spot for 2020. Having a conversation about doujin shooting games will invariably circle back to Crimson Clover at one point or another. World Ignition brought Crimson Clover to a wider audience on Steam back in 2014, but the Switch is where Crimson Clover truly evolves. 
Crimson Clover World Explosion takes everything that made World Ignition great and adds an exquisite arrange mode to the mix, featuring a Gradius-style power-up system with variable sequences and great variations to the new formula for players to take on. Crimson Clover range falls nicely between novice and arcade with regards to difficulty, offering the intermediate player a fine-tuned, rewarding challenge level and plenty of gigantic scoring opportunities. With snappy, fast online ranking and a newly reworked soundtrack from Greiser87, Crimson Clover World Explosion is easily the best variant of this god-tier doujin shooter. While it's only on Switch for now, a Steam version should be dropping soon. When it all comes together, Crimson Clover World Explosion drops in at number 4 for 2020. Now this is interesting. Back in 2018, our top 10 for the year featured uh, this very game. And it was, let's see, uh, oh, it was number three. Wouldn't you know it? So why is it here again at number three? Again? Well, M2 saw it fit to release Ketsui Destiny Kizuna Jigoku Tachi in North America. And to be frank, more people need to know about it. Well, that end also because I came to realize with our review in episode 285 of Bullet Heaven that Ketsui is actually my favorite cave title ever. And we've been getting questions about this release, and the one that's been asked the most is, if I've got the PS3 or 360 version, do I need this one? And the answer is very obviously yes. Ketsui Kizune Jigoku Tachi Extra on the Xbox 360 and PS3 features X mode, which is my favorite game mode across all Ketsui releases so far. And Destiny does not. This keeps the PS3 and 360 versions relevant. However, Destiny rebalances Arcade to the proper speed it should run at rather than the slightly faster speed in Extra. It features the M2 developed Super Easy mode as well as their all new titular Destiny mode, which doesn't beat the X mode in terms of gameplay for me, but it is the most fun version to play for score. Add to that the robust training and awesome Kizuna modes, and players old and new can become a master at the best cave release there is. Cave's rare IKD 2007 Matsuri version is also available as DLC, but comes included on the disc version of the Japanese release. Opinions are my own, and not paid for by Cave or M2. Ketsui Destiny maintains debt status quo in the number 3 spot. Again. In 2018, Rolling Gunner became the first game to grab the number one spot in our Bullet Heaven Shmups Top 10 for 2018. But it was also the only number one for a Shmups Top 10 on Bullet Heaven because we never did more than that one countdown. As such, Rolling Gunner Overpower raises a legitimate question, can DLC rank in on a Top 10? And I must say yes, because Rolling Gunner Overpower might as well be its own standalone release. Hell, if Capcom can do it with something like Street Fighter 2, why the hell not? Adding direct control over the rolling gun in a twin-stick manner is just what the doctor ordered, and game tweaks like adding a life bar but removing the bombers and the ability to cancel shots while still facing a decent challenge makes this add-on essential to the rolling gunner experience, whether on PC or the Nintendo Switch. And you know, if this were its own game and not DLC, this could easily have taken number one again. However, rolling gunner overpower still ranks in at a very respectable number two. Before we get to our number one, let's take a look at some other notable and not-so-hot shooters that we played in 2020.
There are all kinds of very good shooting game compilations seeing release between the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 these days, and of them, M2's offerings are seen as the very best of their kind. Amid titles such as the Shmups Collection by Astroport, Space Invaders Invincible Collection, Psycho Shooting Stars, and even M2's own Alesta Collection, our pick, uh, well, picks, for best compilation have to go to Darius Cosmic Collection Arcade and Console. Not only do these collections feature some top-tier shooting action from one of the greatest eras of shooting games, they also allow players to experience different versions of their included titles. The differences between regions can be subtle, but very important. And of course, this is the least expensive way to experience the rare and obscenely expensive PC Engine promotional game Darius Alpha. It's a shame that Darius Cosmic Collection had to be broken up into two releases, but honestly, both are essential to the modern shooting landscape, and a must for the discerning Darius fan. We'll be honest, the physical space is actually kind of super crowded when it comes to shmups, which is something we never thought we'd say. It's a great sign of life in the genre, and publishers like Super Rare Games, NIS America, First Press, and of course Limited Run have all produced some excellent packages this year. To choose just one is hard to do, so we chose two, the Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha and Bravo Collector's Editions from NIS America. What makes these releases so great isn't just that all 12 of Zero Div's Psycho shooting games are represented in only two releases, rather than three as was seen from the Arc System Works Asia releases in late 2018 and early 2019, nor is it just because they include six soundtrack CDs between the two. It's not even because of the included art cards, small art booklets, or the snazzy premium boxes. No, in addition to these frankly awesome features, the real reason Shooting Stars Alpha and Bravo were so great was their availability. Both were easily securable online through several sites and even at retail locations around the world, so anyone could have gotten them without issue, and at a very affordable price no less. What's this? More DLC? Well, yes, though this time the gameplay is much closer to the original title than we saw in Rolling Gunner Over Power. Oshaberi Hori Jogeki Hori is almost endless fun, and if we had actually had done a 2019 top 10, it would have easily been in the top 3, and maybe even number 1. Check out Bullet Heaven episode 264 for the full deets. With this in mind, the Horijo Thanks Edition DLC pack adds an all-new mode to the base game while introducing an all-new story featuring Umelda, the antagonist of the base game, as the mode's playable character. It adds a ton of extra gameplay to an already extensive title, and does an amazing job of keeping things fresh and fun. We obviously play a lot of retro shooters on Bullet Heaven and our casually hardcore livestreams, and the original PlayStation has definitely seen a lot of love on our channel this year. The Sega Saturn and the PC Engine seem to get all of the press, but the venerable PSX is where we found this year's best retro classic shooting game, and that game is Gaia Seed. Sure, it's insanely expensive if you're going for an original, but the gameplay here is as solid as it comes with a presentation that somehow manages to give Einhander a run for its in-game money. It had a lot of stiff competition this year, especially against Salamander 2, but Gaia Seed stood out to us more than any other classic shooter we saw in 2020. Sometimes a game doesn't have to be especially groundbreaking to be worth playing. A lighthearted approach, competent mechanics, and an inviting audiovisual style is all that's needed. A developer with an infectiously super positive attitude, especially in the face of some interesting bugs discovered in a live playthrough, doesn't hurt either. To that end, Gunpig Firepower for Hire by LaPointe Joints was easily the most wholesome shooting experience of 2020. Sit back, relax, and earn that cash. While blasting away robotic alien monsters with a wide array of food-themed weaponry. We're looking forward to playing it again on the Switch all over again this year, and seeing the next title that Neil LaPointe comes up with. Cruising through the galaxy as a cybernetic penguin equipped with a bevy of deadly sea creature shaped weaponry is a weird enough pretense, but being directly hired by the Queen of England herself to battle demonic forces in space is another thing altogether. The fever dream continues with some truly bizarre pre-rendered visuals and some very unsettling boss audio which definitely boosts the WTF factor. 
Super Psy Penguin is definitely on the easy side, even on hard, but it's no less bizarre for it and players should have no trouble at all seeing it all for themselves, especially the absolutely fitting ending. <laughs> WTF indeed. On the other end of the exact same scale Gaia Seed exists on, Hyper Duel is another hyper expensive game that we were able to cover on Bullet Heaven in 2020, but this time we were not so impressed. Hyper Duel is a game we've been almost begged to look into, so there was a fair bit of anticipation when we were finally able to obtain it, but despite its developer pedigree, Hyper Duel felt shockingly basic. Given the intricacies of Technosoft's own Thunder Force series and even the less popular Blast Wind, Hyperduel left us wondering how it could have possibly garnered the kinds of hype it did without vaulting both Thunder Force and Blast Wind above it. It was a real letdown, especially after spending $600, so Hyperduel gets the dubious honor of being 2020's greatest disappointment. But you know what doesn't disappoint? Our number one pick. <laughs> It's kind of unreal how far some studios can go between two games. Project Starship was a crude, flawed, but ultimately fun foray into the lucrative roguelite shooting subcategory, and if it was anything to go on, well, it could have never prepared us for its sequel. Project Starship X is a game that takes its predecessor's innovations, enhances them, beefs them up, injects them with insane steroids, adds variations to the gameplay, introduces all kinds of secrets, new characters, new weapons, new enemies, new hilarious in-jokes, new visuals, new sound, and swag Thulu. Project Starship X is the ultimate just one more game title of 2020, and no other game has completely hijacked one of our live streams quite like this game totally did. It's just so unbelievably playable, with so many possibilities for unmitigated growth or overwhelming defeat that every round left us hungry for more. It stood out more than any other shooter in 2020, which is kind of amazing considering what we saw up until this point. And that makes Project Starship X our number one pick for the Bullet Heaven Shmup of the Year. So that's all we got for 2020. We know that there are some releases that maybe should have made it onto this list, but the timing was maybe just a bit too close to 2020's end to make them here. We may make exceptions for games like the Alesta Collection for the next roundup in 2022. 2021 is filled with a ton of potential, so we'll be back again next year after we see and play all of the biggest titles of the year. So, what are your number one picks this year? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you all again in the next episode of Bullet Heaven.